Hello. So perhaps some of you are wondering what I'm doing carrying around a stepladder. Well, let me assure you, I was hanging pictures and not people. But there may be some others of you who know that I have another interest besides movies, and that's an interest in fine arts. And some of you may have read in the papers that Sears is starting a, a department, a section of fine arts. But before I tell you about this, let me go back about three months ago and tell you how it all started. George Struthers and Frank Stover came out to Hollywood one day and asked me if I would be interested in making a collection for the fine arts section of uh, 621. <laughs> you see, I'm already catching on to your language. Well, I was tremendously excited by this challenge because I have always felt that the fine art should be brought to the people, to the great numbers of people around this country. And suddenly, I was presented with the opportunity to do it in the company that represents more people than any other company in America and that probably has contact with more American people than any other company. So uh, a lifelong desire of mine was fulfilled and I was given a, a white card, a carte blanche to go ahead and form a collection of fine art that Sears could back up with their great guarantees of quality or your money back and to make it as exciting to you all and to the public. So I accepted the challenge and I started making a collection of fine arts. Also, I met up with a fellow out in California who worked with me in the Sears store there named Chuck Pearson, who told me a great deal about Sears and what the customers like, what they are like, and showed me something that was very important to me and which I had always believed was that I must make a collection that would appeal to all kinds of people, to people who had never seen art before, perhaps to people who were enormously aware of art, all kinds of people. Well, this was indeed a challenge, and I started out in the last 90 days, I've collected about 2,000 paintings. Now, the arts are nothing new at Sears, as you know. In 621, they have been selling reproductions and other kinds of works of art but never really fine art originals. I believe that reproductions have a great place in the home. They teach and they satisfy a need for decoration. But there is no excitement in the world like the excitement of owning an original work of art. Now, I feel that an awful lot of people suffer under two misapprehensions about art. Number one is that it is not available to them, and number two, that it may cost too much money. And so I found that my problem in forming this collection was to correct these misapprehensions, to tell people that art is not something for one class of people, economic class or educated class, but art belongs to everyone. The artist originally created art for all people, not for any special group or any special kind of people. Art is the visual experience of man made exciting by talent. And the talent belongs to that rarest of all individuals, the artist. Strangely enough, Americans will accept this in almost every other field but the visual arts. They will accept it in music. They don't make any comments about someone who was born to write music, though they can't explain it, they don't know it. But the visual artist, the painter, the etcher, is somebody kind of special. So with your permission, I'd like to give art a little haircut right here. I'd like to assure you that it is not done by strange fellows with long hair who live in attics and wear berets. It is done by extremely disciplined human beings who are trying to allow you as people, untalented people like myself, trying to allow them to see through their eyes the visual beauty of this world. 
And so, in your Sears collection, in the Vincent Price collection, as we call it, we have tried to show all kinds of art. Art of the past, art of the present, art that we hope will have a great place in the future. I think probably I, I can talk to you much better if I have a picture to guide me. If you're like I am, I'm completely visual-minded and I'll admit it. So let's take a look at the Vincent Price collection, which belongs to you all at Sears and to the American public now. And let me explain to you some of the points that I have tried to make. So let's start by taking a look at this uh, woodcut by Hiroshiki, one of the most famous Japanese artists of all time. This is some of the merchandise that you're going to be showing to your customers and that you're going to be selling. I can assure you that we're very proud to have some of these pictures. This is one of the early examples of Hiroshige's famous views. It is wonderfully framed and wonderfully priced. You can be proud to show it to your customers and to sell it. Now, one of the points I'd like to make here is that to me, as a little different from a lot of people, I don't feel that a work of art is necessarily just a hand-painted oil on canvas. As a matter of fact, this is completely untrue because some of the greatest works of art ever done in the world have been wood blocks, watercolors, etchings, aquatints, drawings. There are hundreds of different mediums, not just oil paintings, but here is an example of a very fine oil painting. This is by one of the top young French painters named Babeline. He's very much in vogue at the moment. This, again, is a wonderful decorative piece and a fine work of art. Now, another thing that I would like to say to all of you is that art doesn't necessarily have to be dead serious. It can be comical, it can be fun, it can be, uh, as in this case, almost bawdy and still be very good art. This is a drawing by one of the most famous cartoonists who ever lived, Heinrich Clay. And uh, they're very rare, and I think you will have great fun showing this to your customers. Believe me, it's all right. And it's a terrific value almost as good a value as Sears stock. Not quite. Come on now. And now let's look at this here. Something else to show the variety of this collection. This is a painting by Federico Gentilini, one of the top painters of modern Italy. It's uh, done in a very strange technique. It's oil on canvas, to be sure, but uh, also the painter mixed a little sand with the oil so that it gives the texture of a wall, which the Italians love so much. Uh, his picture by a, a local artist in Chicago. His um, name is Gustav Lycan. He was born in Yugoslavia, has worked down in Argentina, and now lives in Chicago. He painted this picture, which I will guarantee you will be one of the most popular things in the whole collection. Some of your customers, I think you'll find, are very interested in the famous names of art. They only know, really, a very few names, like Van Gogh and Rembrandt and different people like that. Well, here's one of them. This is Henri de Toulouse-Lautrec, the most famous artist of his time, really one of the extraordinary people. He was particularly fond of the life of the cafes in Paris, and this is one of his favorite subjects, a bassoonist in a cafe orchestra. It's an extremely rare print in that it is signed down here by Lautrec himself. Many of the artists didn't sign their prints, and it is also hand-colored in the face by Lautrec. Now, that uh, is quite an expensive item, but here's one that I think you probably have a lot of customers for. It's by one of the famous printmakers of the early part of this century. He's... Uh, caught the charm of a little bird looking at an enormous bug, and it's called The Young Entomologist, a very serious title for a very humorous picture. And it's only $15, but an original work of art of great value and really worth every cent. Now, when you come to the really famous names in art, as I said before, there are very few of them, but here is a giant. This is the great Francesco Goya, probably the most brilliant satirist in the history of art. This is from the famous Capriccio series. Both of these aquatints, as a matter of fact, are. 
And I think an awful lot of people felt that they never could afford to own a picture by the great Goya. Well, you'd be amazed how reasonable these are. These pictures, first class prints by the great Goya, $35 a piece. Well, so much for one of the most famous names in art. Now, here is a picture by a woman in California who's comparatively unknown, but who in her first two or three exhibitions out on the coast has made an enormous success. I think anyone who looks at this picture will recognize it, see that it has modern values as well as classical values. One of the problems that you all will find in selling this merchandise, as you do with any other kind of merchandise, is that the better you know it, the more you know about it, the easier it is to sell. Now, we've tried to help you on this by writing a little, uh, well, you could call it almost like a, a program note at the foot of each painting that will tell you something about the artist, why I have selected it, what kind of art it is. This will help you tremendously. But don't forget, the, the first thing in selling a work of art is to have respect for the customer's taste. The old cliche about, I don't know anything about art, but I, I know what I like, is very true. And people will like something enormously, they won't know why. But the assurance that you can give them is that it is all first-class work. And that's terribly important. Now, let's move over to a, another area that, that, for me, has been one of the great excitements in putting this collection together is to discover for this vast audience of Sears customers work that perhaps they've never seen before. In this particular instance, this is an etching by a man named Louis Legrand. He died just a few years ago, having lived a, a real rich and rowdy bohemian life, having been part of the great excitement of Paris. And he left behind him these wonderful impressions, almost as good as the great Degas of ballet dancers. Now, this is one of the prizes of our collection, something that I think a lot of people haven't felt that they could afford or even find in this country. This is one of the great English watercolors of the 19th century and the last part of the 18th century. Here again, you will find a description about it, why I think it's good. I've tried to make these very personal in order to give the customer a feeling that I really was selecting each work of art for some individual out there who is going to come along and say, that is what I like. It is beautifully framed. It'll fit in my home. Here is the price. And I have the Vincent price and the Sears guarantee that it's OK. This is my pride and joy. This is one of the greatest names in the history of art, if not the greatest name. It is a name that everybody knows, a name you don't have to explain at all. One reason being that last year, the most tremendous price ever in the history of art was paid for a painting by this particular artist, Rembrandt. Now, I'm pretty sure that most of your customers will say, as they did years ago about diamonds and mink, um, Rembrandt at Sears? Well, yes. This is one of the things that I wanted to prove to people, that you could buy this greatest name in art at Sears, at Sears prices. It's not a cheap object by a long shot, because it's one of the most famous etchings in the world. It comes from five of the greatest collections in the whole history of collecting. It was bought by the first collector from Rembrandt personally and handed down through the great Sir Thomas Lawrence, who was one of the greatest collectors and painters of 18th century England, to a collector about 20 years ago who in turn sold it. Now here's something else that's very exciting about the Sears gallery with the Vincent Price collection. Most galleries, you know, when you buy a painting, they ask you to leave it there so other customers can come in and look at it, but not here. Mrs. So-and-so comes in, she likes that picture, she takes it off the wall, and she pays for it and takes it home. And that, believe me, is a great benefit to the collector. Now, let's look over here at this large canvas by one of the best-known American artists, Carl Zerbe. This is going to be one of the top pictures in our collection, though we have many pictures comparable to it. 
This is a real work of art, a very exciting picture, decorative, serious, and at the same time humorous. It seems to me it satisfies anything that a customer could want. And that is one of our great aims in the whole collection, to make a great variety, as you have seen a little bit of here with me today. Pictures for every taste and for every pocketbook. Uh, thanks for letting me show you around the Vincent Price collection. It's been my pleasure. And I'm pretty sure that by now you can tell it's my enthusiasm, too. But let me assure you of one thing. This is no arty experiment. These are not exhibitions of my taste or anybody else's taste. This is simply merchandise to sell to your customers. This is the best merchandise that I can supply you in 621. I will be out all over the world buying this merchandise for you. Old masters, all kinds of art, the work of young people, unknown people, everything I hope to fit all kinds of tastes and all kinds of pocketbooks. Merchandise that you can sell to your Sears customers with the assurance that it is genuine and authentic and the best. And I hope that over the years, you all will come to see art as I see it, as no more than the ultimate in home furnishings. And I hope that over the same years, your customers and you will come to see art as the furniture of the eye and of the mind.